Good evening. <clears throat> Welcome to the Town of Deerfield a Select Board Board of Health meeting held, being held here November 17th, 2021 at 6.05 p.m. The location of the meeting is the main meeting room, Deerfield Municipal Offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the Governor Baker's June 16th, 2021 Act, extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participation provisions of his March 20th, 2020 executive order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, uh, chapter 30A, section 20. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technical problems interrupt the virtual broadcast, unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public will participate with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the Town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation details noted. <clears throat> Dial in number 312-626-6799 or 929-205-6099. Meeting ID is 911-604-1580 with a passcode of 570012. Uh, for those who wish to participate via Zoom, go on to the Town of Deerfield uh, website and click on today's date and take the agenda for this meeting and the Zoom link will be there. Okay. Um, in addition, to provide select board attendees the opportunity to share information with the board and to ensure the ability to conduct business in an orderly manner, the following procedures will be used at all meetings. The presiding chair or designee shall determine the length of public participation se segment. Speakers will be allowed two minutes per, uh, to present their material. The presiding chair or designee may pr pr permit extension of time limit. Topics of discussion will be limited to those items under the authority of the select board and all remarks will be addressed through the presiding chair or designee of the meeting. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Um, we do not have any scheduled hearings tonight. Um, we don't have any scheduled appearances. Uh, select board reports. And um, I just want to say that um, I had attended a conference last week, um, two weeks ago now. Oh, gosh. I can't believe it. I'm glad you're having fun. I know. Um, and uh, I got some good good information on the soil health. It's probably policies that are probably going to be um, implemented on the state level. And so it, we will align, work really hard to align our policy that we're working on here, that we got the MVP grant with the state, new state um, initiative, so that whoever wants to pr participate in um, a grant program will have the baseline and done for them. So um, that was kind of exciting because we haven't really moved on that soil health initiative. Um, Governor Baker's, you know, had has had a budget since January for uh, July 1st of you know 165 million. It hasn't really been implemented. So um, it's I'll hear more about it in January when I go to a state commission meeting. But anyway. We're working on our MVP program to make sure that everyone is ready to participate in that, um, you know, private landowners. So that's good. And we have the forum. We're working on the forum for February 12th. It's an all-day climate um, forum at the um, frontier. So more information will be forthcoming. But it will be a sign-up like we did before. It will be a, free, a lovely free lunch from Deerfield Academy. 
and snacks from Eagle Brook. So people should come. And it will be focused on, um, you know, we, we did the big picture the last time in March, I mean, uh, February 29th, 2020. We got sort of derailed with COVID. And so this is micro, a micro look, but all our efforts on the local level will be able to be accumulative and count. So it's going to be give you how to do green your house, you know, give you information on mini splits, on solar, you know, picking out electric cars, you know, the whole, all, all the things that everyone is interested in. So um, it will be very good. We'll have our agenda pretty soon. Very good. Yes. Okay. Um, I've got a public announcement here. Um, Light Up the Night Holiday Decorating Contest will be sponsored by the Deerfield Recreational Committee. Uh, all homes in the town of Deerfield are welcome to participate. Participation recognizes that submitting their application, their physical address will be posted on the town website and social media. Entry forms must be received by December 10th of this year. Judging will be held uh, December 14th through 16th. Lights must be on from 4 to 10 p.m. during this time. Homes decorated by professionals are not eligible. So, um, this is on our uh, town website, so those of you that may be interested uh, can look there. And registration forms will be available at uh, the website Deerfield Mass or DeerfieldMA.us backslash recreation. So, those who wish to participate uh, for the contest may, and those who just wish to put up their lights may also do that, which makes a very bright Christmas this year. Thank you. Um, also on a note, um, a week from this Saturday, we have the Deerfield Craft uh, Police Association Craft Fair oh. at Frontier. Uh, I know some people have been uh, asking if there's going to be any holiday things and uh, this was something that was not done last year but uh, has been going on for quite a few years and it's uh, very well received by the community and it's a great job and a source of revenue for the um, Police Relief Association and they do an excellent job with this so we look forward to seeing all of you there. What's that? COVID-19. Yeah. Thank you, so, Board it. of Health reports. Well, um, we had an excellent clinic at Deerfield Elementary this afternoon. 382 uh, vaccines were given out. It was really exciting. Um, so we'll hopefully have a second date somewhere around December 11th. We have a clinic again in Friday at Sunderland Elementary School, and um, it's for boosters as well as first shots and um, pediatric, um, you know, five to, well, whatever age, anybody five and over. We have, we'll have the vaccine for the youngest kids, five to 12, teenagers, 12 to 16, and then adults. So, and we have all, you know, it's with the state um, contracted Vax bus. So they have everything. They have Pfizer, they have J&J, &J, and they have Moderna, and they have the little kids ones. So it's very exciting. Um, and it was, I felt it was well run. run. Um, and I want to thank Kevin uh, Scarborough, he, he, uh, the highway crew, and Kevin brought over all the partitions and our signage to the elementary school. They're picking them up and they're taking them down to Sunderland for Friday and they'll pick them up and bring them back and put them back in the church. And it, it is so nice that Kevin does that. It's just wonderful. So it worked out fine. And um, uh, we Thanksgiving, as everyone remembers, last year, the week after Thanksgiving, um, we had to we had a huge surge, and then again after Christmas, and we were you know had to close down the schools for a little bit, and you know it was just uh, it was rough. So please, please remember the vaccine is the first layer. It's not a force field. It's the first layer of protection then your mask, 
and then social distancing. And try to keep be as careful as possible over the Thanksgiving holidays. I know everyone wants to see their families, and it's awful that this keeps going on. But um, we have we definitely have Delta uh, variant in Massachusetts. The majority of the cases are Delta now, but there's also the Delta Plus. Um, that's just starting to circulate again. And uh, I mean, new, you know, it's come over from Europe and um, we just really have to be careful. So uh, try as hard to, as you can to, to minimize your exposure from outside your household pod and, and be outside as much as possible when you have, you know, gatherings. Okay, um, then, you know, just to build on that, you know, we're very proud of the Town of Deerfield for their way they've been handling this. Uh, we have one of the highest vaccination rates. Um, the people have been very cautious on things, uh, despite us not having a, a mask mandate within the town, uh, because honestly, we didn't feel that we needed one at this time. Um, and on a side note, let's wish to congratulate Montague because they had, for the first time since this pandemic started, a zero cases within, and there's five villages in Montague? Yeah. So. About 8,800 people, yeah. Huh? About 8,800 total. Yeah. So. They're a little bit um, bigger than us. It's very, very positive for this area and uh, looking forward to, you know, I'm looking forward to the holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas, um, and whatever holidays you folks uh, celebrate, but uh, it's, looks very encouraging to me so we just we just really have to be careful because we're, we're spending more time indoors and 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 you just just have to you ha can't give up hmm. and and we want to keep the schools open it's so important to keep the schools open it has a real impact on our kids so um, so far we're doing okay <clears throat> no minutes right no minutes Okay, discussion and decision items. Tonight we have for appointments, uh, Jennifer Remillard to the Senior Housing Committee. Jennifer's here. Um, Jennifer's here? Oh, where's Jennifer? Oh, there she is. On the screen. Um, you know, I myself personally highly recommended Jennifer. She's been very active in the town. Um, not that we always get on the same page, but we've been very active and, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, uh, and uh, I really look forward personally to having her on this uh, committee. And I strongly recommend that we appoint her. I would make the motion then. Um, I'm thrilled she's come to uh, several of our meetings already and is a great addition. And she's also participating in the uh, um, co Connecting Communities uh, Initiative, and that's really important for us. I'll second that. Uh, any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, David. The motion carried. Congratulations, Thank Jennifer. Look forward Thank to you. Have Thank you for volunteering. Thank you. Uh, the next thing on our agenda is uh, permits. Um, we have, let's see what's. Treehouse's liquor license. Okay, for. The last one we were waiting for. What's that? Treehouse's liquor license renewal is in there. That was the last yeah. one we were waiting yeah. for for those. So for the uh, Liquor license renewal, so it's a farmer brewery pouring permit on premises uh, for Treehouse Brewing. Uh, we've got the Conley Victor uh, for Berkshire Brewing Company, Gianni Figs, Historic Deerfield, PHB Yankee, Powder Hollow Brewery, and Treehouse Brewing Company. Um, I will make a motion to support those. I'll second it. All those in favor? I, Carolyn. I, David. Motion carry. Next thing on the list is class two dealers license. Uh, got Richard Botigo? Botigo. Botigo for Richard's Automotive on uh, Greenfield Road and Gary and Scott Kalikowski, uh, Deerfield Motors and Equipment on Greenfield Road as well. 
Uh, at funeral directors, we've got Harold Risley from Risley Funeral Home. I will um, make a motion to approve all of those. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Carolyn? Aye. David? Entertainment yearly licenses. Uh, Betsy Shea at Hotel Warren. Uh, Robert Petrucci at the Tavern Sports Bar. And Damian Lee Goudreau at Treehouse Brewing Company. An annual non-resident auctioneer license to Michael Petrusky? Junior at Catamount Auction Company. I will uh, make a motion to approve those as well. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, David. Bedravich, sorry. What's that? Bedravich. Bedravich? Bedravich. Bedravich. Okay. Before you move on, can I ask a question? Yes, you may. Um, the last piece, so Treehouse is the last liquor license renewal, so the board needs to approve the form that's right in front of you. This one? Nope. It's the one oh, that's in one? the... Mm -hmm. And that's what that does is it just confirms the certifications for 2022 that all so of them have been we renewed. Don't have to, we don't have to do this one. No. Okay. All of them have been renewed and the licensing authority just needs to sign that. That's generally the last piece of the liquor license renewals every year. You have one. Do we sign three places here? Actually, I was going to ask if you wanted to, us to use the stamp on Jennifer's. Okay. Case. Would you prefer we use the stamp? Yeah. And that's the Look. that's the copy that we need to send to uh, the ABC. Suit. ABC. Yeah. We just kept it all together. Okay. There was something that came up that I wanted the board to consider, and it's in here, part of the license. Um, we were notified that the bond for Two Feathers Class Two license has been canceled effective 12 19. Mm -hmm. And the board had already approved their 2022 license. So the concern is if the bond isn't reinstated, the business is out of compliance with the general laws. So I'm not sure how the board wants to deal with it. Um, it could be that we send, we staff send a letter notifying the owner that the bond needs to be reinstated. And if not, if it isn't, that the select board can revoke the permit. Um, what I would suggest is that letter go out sooner rather than later. I just want the board to be aware. Mm -hmm. And my question is, is would you be would would you want us to bring this back to you in December for a decision on revocation, or would you want us to follow the? Um, Everything's up to date. My David. personal opinion is that um, you know we'll send a letter, let them no notify, uh, we'll put the renewal on hold for 22, and but. Um, you had already approved it. So I know, but it's ready. But without the insurance, so he's not in compliance. It's not in compliance, so we have to hold. So my suggestion would be to revoke if if the insurance if we are not notified that the insurance has been renewed, um, the board could revoke the permit. Yes. Um, that's, so that's my what, opinion. What we could frame the letter to say is, is if this isn't renewed, we're warning you that we've been aware, we've made aware of it. We have the letter typed. It's warning them and saying if this isn't renewed, it is revoked. So you guys would have to take a vote to that effect right now, or wait until the next meeting. But the no, sooner we I, deal with it, the better. Let's let's wait till the next meeting, but please send out the letter so that he's aware that. We want, he has an opportunity to get the bond reinstated or not. He does. Yeah. And yep. this is more than a month ahead of when that bond would be, when that bond is effective, that cancellation is effective. Right. right. So, um, yeah. And then, you know, when we have the full board setting, we can, we can talk, about it, talk about it again. Or we make a decision to revoke okay. this. Yeah.
Thank you. And the next thing on our agenda is the uh, Shared Services of Public Health Nurse Grant Program re Overview. Um, we were able to um, secure a $250,000 grant, uh, $125,000 for this year and next year um, through uh, Shared Services. It's Greenfield, Montague, um, Sunderland, and Deerfield. And it's for contact tracing and um, public health services, public health nurse services for you know, fighting COVID. It's basically to help the, um, we had paid extra money last year. So this covers extra, if anything, if we have a huge surge coming up after, the, you know, during the holidays or after the holidays, this will help pay for our expenses. But in general, it will help um, contact tracing in the other three towns because, um, in our school in like Frontier, Deerfield obviously has the most students there, but then it's followed by Sunderland and then Montague and Greenfield. So it's really actually really uh, school choice. So it's actually incredibly important that we have really good um, communication and uh, contact tracing and we stay on top of it to keep our schools open. So I'm actually very, very thrilled um, to have this because you know um, that means they'll be top notch um, contact tracing, which has been the key to containing everything, mm -hmm. to have immediate and good contact tracing and, and have alert as soon as possible of any exposures and that's how you contain it. So this is, this is thrilling for me. Um, and we don't do anything. Casey has no op um, obligation to this. It's a, will be a Greenfield employee, you know, that's part-time nurses, two part-time nurses, um, and Greenfield will be the employer um, and um, or the fiscal agent and they will just um, work out of Greenfield and when necessary um, handle our problems in all of our towns potentially. Good. Yep. Anything on this? No. I'll, the only thing I would ask is can who do we talk to in Greenfield to get a copy of the grant paperwork? Um, so Jennifer it Hoffman it will, um, as soon as we, we we've got to, you know, um, send some kind of uh, like email to Jennifer to say that we're partners, we're willing partners in this, you know, as this town of Deerfield. And so for her file, and she will um, send us the, you know, completed grant forms from the state. Very good. Um, the next couple of things on our agenda, I think we're going to table for this evening. Uh, the first one is the uh, school commissioner's abatement policy. Yes. Um, I spoke to the DPW superintendent, and he would like to go over it again. So he asked me to respectfully ask the board to hold on this, and because Trevor's not here too, mm -hmm. I think it would be helpful. Trevor was part of that conversation since he's so knowledgeable, knowledgeable and understands how this all connects with the wastewater treatment plant. Okay. Um, the capital uh, improvement plan applications, you want to table that or do we want to? Well, the due date is December 1st. So what I did was I gave you guys a copy of the most recent capital plan. And any initiatives that the town has, or that the select board has, anything that's on that plan has to be refreshed every year. Bylaw requires it. So what I wanted the board to do is look at that and tell me where you want to go. I will tell you what Kevin and I think um, about certain things. Um, well, I, I, we had, um, I guess this is where we'd want to talk about the CCI. We've had two excellent um, connecting community initiative meetings um, led by Denise Mason. Um, we would like to have a reserve transfer of about $3,000 to cover, you know, material represents. Um, That's further into the agenda, yeah. yep. Um, you but we had also talked last night, um, we had, uh, I think, pretty good consensus 
that um, we would right now without, you know, this is just the very beginning, but right now we, were, we would like to go forward with um, the grammar school renovations into the town hall, probably rip down this building um, and connect a new community senior center between um, the grammar school, the old grammar school senior center and the police station. And we're gonna keep the church and that is either gonna be um, connected to some kind of senior housing or we, we haven't, you know, that hasn't been fleshed out, but it's enough to say that we are moving forward with that. And of course we had talked about the Leary lot. So we need to put something in for the Leary lot. We need to put something in for this new complex. And um, I would say senior housing because the senior housing committee would be recommending to senior to, but the senior housing would not be in um, 2023 fiscal 23 requests. It would be a fiscal 24 request because it would be after we do this, this kind of thing. And the, and the church is going to be renovated temporarily for the seniors while we're doing all this renovation and construction, reconstruction. So um, the idea, it's solid enough to us to start reaching out to Jim McGovern's office, Elizabeth Warren, and um, Richie Neal's office. And then Joe Comerford, because you have the infrastructure plan for sure. We have sewer ready. You know, we have our plans are sewer ready down there. We're we're ready for our. I mean, we have phase two. It's literally happening. We're going to do the Leary lot, and um, so we have we have to put in for MVP match. Um, we're going to. This would be doing our ARPA funding for Leary Lot, the difference between going green, we would want traditional asphalt costs, which I think we do have that cost. Um, and then we have the green cost plan already, so that we would apl be applying to the MVP program for the difference between um, um, pervious and impervious surface. That, that, you know, in our design, so that that's an MVP. We would be matching the MVP with our ARPA funding, and we have that already. We're going to do um, start the renovations. We have CPA money, so that match is happening. But we need to hustle for a regional senior center. There's three communities involved, so. I'm not sure if that's going to be in the next round of ARPA money for, um, you know, the state, but we need to be talking to Joe Comerford and Nellie Blay about the three town senior center, the brand new one that will go between the police station and connect to their newly renovated town hall. Nellie Blay's bill is moving forward, which is to help with municipal buildings. So we need to get that going um, and, and hustle and get in line for that. So basically, Casey, we have about $35 million worth of projects that we need to have placeholders for and also hustle to get money for, okay? So, I, so I know it's confusing, question. but we, we, we have probably for every dollar we put in, we've got to leverage six to $8, which is about double the normal leverage money, okay? so. We have to come up with a story that's going to allow us to get money to build a new senior community center, senior center community center, and it will help us renovate the um, old senior, you know, the senior center, current senior center for the town hall and rip this place down. And then we'll put senior housing over here somewhere that will connect somehow, okay? So let me bring us back to a previous conversation in a couple of a couple of meetings ago. Um, we've had conversations about 
using MVP money towards some of the lower cost items that we need for wastewater treatment issues that are climate related over at the, at, at, you can't do both. Senior uh, MVP program sort of makes you focus. So I'm just saying, if you wanted to do it that way, then that well, no, that open for no funding source. We we well, the, what we we're going to hustle for the whole project, but we have the ARPA funding. We have already there's consensus, although we haven't voted for it. But our consensus is we're working on the Leary lot, okay, with ARPA funding that we have in hand now, and the difference we're going for an MVP program grant to say the difference between regular just paving it over and then making it very green, you know, pervious surface and, um, you know, landscape, landscaping it, all right? And then we have the park. We're, the difference we want to put into the park, you have the traditional paving over the driveway versus putting in pervious surface, rain gardens, the whole thing. That, again, you're taking off a slice of the park expense in the MVP. So what we're doing in our next MVP application, which will be coming up in the next couple months, is the difference in the cost in the park between traditional just, you know, paving over whatever and doing everything green. And the green and the difference in the Leary lot between just paving everything over and doing everything green and lovely, okay? So we have those two. We have the sewer tank. You know, the we're raising the um, sides of the tank so it's more flood resistant. So that amount is going into the MVP program. So we have three parts of the MVP application that we are putting in going forward in the spring. Okay? We are all have a match for that. The money has already been appropriated for the park. The money we have the ARPA money for the match for the um, Leary lot, and we've already, the town's already voted for, for, uh, for phase two. So it's not that we don't have the match, but we can get additional funding that will lower the cost to the town. Then we have all these reconstruction, re rehab of the grammar school, old grammar school for, this, for us as a town hall. We want that, we want a new senior center, community center between the town hall or the new town hall and the police station, okay? And that's what we're going to hustle for. And then we have the senior housing project, which will be in 20, fiscal 2024. So when we put this down, this is all initiatives that are coming from us, okay? And then we have to start the process of lobbying our delegation. Right. That, okay. I get all that. The question okay. is, is, any of these things, we have to understand what the explanation is because CIPC is going to ask us this, and you guys have a meeting on the 8th. I know. So I can that be framework. ready. Uh, we'll be as ready as we can. We, we will have two or three meetings of the CCI. So who's framing that? Who, who's doing the application? The, it will come from the select board. I will make sure that it, you get the language to get as a placeholder. Because we'll need language and explanation, yeah. any attachments that identify that. We're going to keep refining it. We'll have, we'll have something concrete by mid-January. That's the goal of the committee um, that we have to take to Boston with us, okay? And we're going to meet with all the different agencies and make sure we're moving forward. I know. Well, Denise, is Denise, Denise is here. Denise, um, do you want to unmute and uh, clarify anything that's not clear, which was just about everything I said? No, oh, Carolyn. I think I think you explained it well. I mean, I think that's you captured everything we discussed last night at the meeting. So yeah, I don't really have anything to add to that. Okay. Thank you. You're I, welcome. What's really important here is that we got to start lobbying for the money. Okay, I got $100,000 for our Mosquito District, and I started well over a year ago badgering Joe Comerford's office, okay? And the reason we had to have that money is because 
we only charge $5,000 for surveillance, mm -hmm. all right, for standard surveillance per town. There's no way that we can meet DCAM requirement as a new startup Mosquito District to have five years of rent in the bank. Right. So they couldn't really give us enough money to, or it was unlikely we were going to get enough money to buy a building, but we have rent for at least five years, mm -hmm. and we're on their radar so that we could afford, figure out how we're going to afford rent. Mm -hmm. But we have now the money supposedly will come, and hopefully after reconciliation, and and we'll get the money. But it it was this time last year that I started talking to J Joe. Okay, so what we need to do is that we have to do the same thing for our senior new senior center. Okay, and we have to do the same thing for the renovation of of the town hall. Like I said, Nat Natalie is aware of it, but we just have to, in other words, we, we start the inquiries, you call, you, you just talk to staff like every week or every couple of weeks. How's it going? What does it look like? And we've got to figure out, is this going to be, are we going to qualify for our stuff, going to qualify under an earmark in the next round of ARPA funding, or is this going to be right. under infrastructure? Right. There's no question that our sewer project is going to be under infrastructure. Yes, that definitely falls within there. Right. But they haven't, it will be probably at least a month before the, the rules are promulgated by Congress and you know how the money's coming. Mm -hmm. Okay. But in the meantime, Jim McGovern has got to know that we got, we're spending way too much money uh, in our sewer and that we need help. So we need to make those phone calls. Richie Neal, you got, even though he's not our district, he's very you know, he's in chair of the committee. So we got to make sure that we talk to him, okay? And and let them know that we're ready. So the, the question is, what's the message? That's the, the message thing. is we're... We have to have the messaging solid before we start making those phone calls. The message is we have these projects and we need help. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. They're going to want... So to, to my point, it's... We need to have some something for them to chew on. In other words, they need yeah. to understand the details. And one thing that I would say is, I see, and the deets thing is is noted. I don't know if it's well. I'm not sure how, exactly how to pronounce the name, but it's noted as an item unanticipated, which is the request for conceptual design services to deal with the se turning the senior center, the old grammar school, into municipal offices, which I think is a great idea, but there really hasn't been a lot of public discussion about it. So I think just like we did with the park, we should consider having public discussion. We will. This is why um, we're doing the CCI committee and we will have more public discussion and it will be, that's why we're asking for a budget of $3,000 so we can produce materials and have, you know, Denise uh, be able to have some freedom of being able to purchase whatever we need for presentations. Mm -hmm. Whatever. So, if I'm hearing right, we need to put. So, all of these are capital requests, whether they're funded outside or not, they have to be addressed. So, Larry Lott, the senior center complex, being uh, including community and senior youth space, right? Yes. Yes. The, Absolutely. That's why we're one of the reasons we have to go to the we have to go to the state agencies and say this is ridiculous that everything has to be siloed in a small town. We can't afford it. We have to have that waiver that we had started to get and had you know the first day that you were almost here. Yeah. We had the state agency person came out and with their staff and they met with you and us mm -hmm. and it was very productive. And then I don't know what happened either. She, I, I, either she quit or she had COVID she, she or... She left is what happened. Okay. And they wow. did fill that position for a long time, and I'm still trying to find out the person's name who All right. replaced her. Then there's not a huge rush, but we need to find out between now and January, that's all. So that we can... We need connect. to make... We need to connect and say we're going to meet with you in, in Boston. We'll be in Boston. Let's meet. And then get... You know, Denise will present definitive plans and um, we'll have definitive plans by then. We are, it's a very tight timeline, mm. but we're going to be able to do it. Okay. So if we go back to the capital projects plan, do we need more money for the cake restoration? Because I have no. to do it. We have no. to do a completely new one. No. Okay. 
No, the cake, uh, everything worked out. Everything was either donated or... Um, Where is the cake, by the way? It's in Waitley. Right oh, now. okay. So it is the cake in Waitley. Okay. They didn't... Uh, Waitley's only got 250. They're celebrating 250, but they started to keep 350 candles on there. Mm -hmm. So when we get it, we get it for free or a dollar or whatever. And then um, it's going to be transported up here. And um, we don't have to do any kind of... They never took the candles off, so we don't have to put 100 back. So They just turned them off, I think. <laughs> I drive by it quite a bit now. Yeah. Um, okay, so that was those... What about a display case? Do we still need money for that, or is that on hold, um, too? Actually, I don't, I don't uh, know about that. Because there was a display case that people were talking about. We had written one last year. Oh, wasn't that the one that we were going to put over here or something? Wasn't that you were going to have an additional one? Were you the one? Who, whose idea was that? was someone's idea. Um, I may I uh, speak to that, Carolyn? Sure. sure. Um, I think we had wanted to have a display case to put memorabilia from the 300th and other items on display. That had historical value, specific, you know, maybe a separate one from the one that the historic commission uses. Um. Uh. Yeah. So we have to see if Deerfield Academy will build another one, another section. We well, we had asked, we had pushed that ten thousand dollars back. If we do need to keep that, I then we, I need to should. know so that we can rewrite that application. Yeah, we better do that, I guess. Thank you, Jennifer. You're welcome. Okay, um, so I would classify the three things we talked about around NVP in the grant section. Um, do we have any any land purchases or anything? Uh, no. Okay, so I'll take that one off. It Well, it'll stay there, it just won't have a number attached to it. Right. So one one thing that Kevin and I have talked about is doing some sort of a request for money to secure the envelope of the old senior center, regardless of what we do with it. We need to stop the leaks. So he's going to work on that. And if he needs help, I've asked him, I've said to him, we will, we'll do it together if we have to. Um, we really shouldn't go through the winter with that. So if uh, he had an idea, but let me talk to him before I... Okay. If we can figure out an idea to, to do some... I, I would something that just is a placeholder type thing, that's what he's he is interested in considering. Okay. So I do know that we can expect a town common design request, um, or it'll either be design and improvements or construction or something of that nature. The ad hoc committee has been working on an application for that. I was just going to say, I think Kate Lawless gave us an update... Denise, do you remember Kate Wallace gave us an update and she said that, that they were almost ready, right? I'm sorry, I missed that. I was doing something. Oh, no, almost no, no. ready um, for... Town Common Committee, didn't, um, Kate Wallace said they were very close to the um, final design, right? I th yes, I think so. Okay. So I would... Okay, so they're, they're working towards that. We will so I would that keep that on through. because mm -hmm. I think sure, they're finally getting, um, they feel comfortable moving ahead now. Um, I don't know what to do in terms, I haven't heard from John about municipal offices and police department paving. I think he, um, I, I think we that, were sitting on that as I, on what we're um, going to do. Um, I, I'm not saying that I don't believe that we should be paving, but I don't want to spend any money on paving and then have to rip it up. Exactly. So, That's so what I thought, but I yeah. haven't asked him about it lately. The way you do it in Massachusetts. Oh, it's in the road and it's in the to change the water pipes to sewer pipes. Yeah, no. it's in the newspaper. Um, so or that I think is going to be Pick granted out. <laughs> uh, this is, um, I mean, I, I understand what, especially yeah. now that we're talking about connecting the yeah. police. Yeah, you really need to have senior a senior center and yeah. the town hall. Totally. I, uh, we really need to wait. So here's one question. The building inspections and permitting software, we weren't able to pay for that through CARES. That is an eligible expense I think we could get through ARPA. Um, it's actually not a huge amount of money. I think if we added the Board of Health, it would probably take us up to around 18,000. Okay. Um, I think there are some smaller things that the board has, has by consensus discussed 
the community health worker. Um, and so for ARPA things, we really need to narrow that down because otherwise, if we're not going to do that, I'm going to put in the inspections permitting software request because we need it. It's become a situation where we absolutely need the ability to do things out of the office. I just want to make sure that we're putting in enough money for the archiving because it doesn't do any good if you don't have, you know, the file that, you know. Well, there are two different things. The permitting that, software I, would allow us to be able to turn permits over faster and be able to have people do things online, which became an issue during COVID. Um, the archiving, though, I do think we should put that, refresh that app, that request, but I don't know what it's going to look like because I don't know the generation okay. of that request. But I, part of the problem is you want to be able to, for electronic, if you're going to go electronic permitting, you need to have the archiving online as well because when you pull up the history of, you want the history of the property to show what's been done because otherwise people just will, the permitting, it's, it's disconnected. So you don't have the history associated with the property. So you're saying it has to go together or it doesn't move forward. Right. But it didn't go together when we got it approved last year. It, I, you are voting to do the archiving and you're voting to do the electronic permitting. It is two separate items, but they have to be done at, together. So what you, you realize, let me just say, you realize you're tying the hands of an entire department if they don't have the ability to have that. Regardless of whether you have archiving, if you don't have the ability for them to be able to turn permits over in a different way and COVID continues, which we think it probably will, I think it makes it difficult for folks to respond because, again, that's a, that's a department that has high... A Casey, you have regulatory issues and you need to make sure you know where your septic systems are, you need to know where the wells are, you need all that information, what's been done in that property before, and so the file that goes with the property needs to be online if you're going to do permits online. Well, but those files also have to exist in paper. They're required to exist in paper. What we're trying to do is facilitate permits moving forward. So I'm going to tell, that basically puts a spear in everything because that can't go forward. That archiving has been pushed back at least three years. So Hi. if that's the limitation, then it, hand, it ties everyone's hands over there. Well... I, I, I don't think that's a fair estimation if it hasn't been connected before. You can talk I hear to what Dick, you're saying you can because I Dick, do know that that needs to happen. Bob, but I don't feel comfortable going 100% online unless we have uh, uh, the ability to be archiving. Then I think if Bob wants to move forward with that, he's going to want your support for archiving because that has been pushed back at least three years from my understanding. Well, and I, I'm frankly, glad we need it because we don't have space. On the other yeah. hand, we're still required to keep paper files. Bob and and Dick can meet with all three of us, and we'll be fine. We'll talk. Well, about it. but that's the thing. This is that whole permitting thing. We tried various ways to get that, and at the point that I thought CARES was going to pay for it, they turned around and said no to us. So they've effectively sat for two years because this started before I even got here. Mm -hmm. And it's not a high cost to transition, but those permits do have to remain as permanent records and they do have to be printable records in case someone comes in. You can't, we wouldn't fully turn into the permitting system that the COG has, which is all electronic, because they are the archive themselves for the towns that belong to it. So that's a different scenario. Um, I just want to be clear that if we're not going to go forward with if those two things are tied together and we can't go forward with either one, everybody recognizes the fact that that then keeps, keeps that one department tied to just paper records. And if something were to, to happen, I'll talk to difficult. Bob and Dick again, and maybe well, maybe it's you know strange. it's Bob and it's it's not just that it relates to all the other types of permits. Like you said, you're right. It does relate to everything. I mean, there was a push several years ago to change the planning board permitting to include electronic, electronic formats. And we did that, and we didn't have an archive, but we did allow that to happen because that was the format that was the state was utilizing. And at the time, Pat Smith suggested we make that change. It did turn out to be useful because you could share information more effectively. Can I but, ask a question? Yes. 
Um, <clears throat> so why, why can't we get the online permitting, but then gradually do the archiving along the way? I just want to make sure that we do not lose the ability to keep the history of the property with the, you know, well, with the online permitting, that still has to be approved by the building commissioner and stuff, so they have to research it before they grant the permit, right? right? Yes. Yeah, I, do. Yeah, for sure. sure. I just, I'm basing my opinion on the nightmare that would happen with FERCOG. Well, we and, can also um, link them later, Carolyn. I don't want, sorry to interrupt you, but I mean, we can, we can link them later on and it's, the permitting can also be um, linked to GIS which is another step forward, which is super important and so very helpful because then it's connected to the property. As long as the GIS, but GIS is only as good as the information that you put into it. Correct. So but what I'm concerned is you want to know where the septic field is, you want to know where the well is, and you mm -hmm. want to know where the buildings are in relation to all, all, all those things. For sure, for sure. And um, when I worked in Amherst, because that's the only example I have, so I always go back and use it. They had the online archiving of all of the paper copies were scanned in. And like I, if somebody called me and wanted to know what the septic design was, you went to the Board of Health page, you click on it, go down to the street number, and you pull it up and you can see exactly all of that information that you're talking about. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. <coughs> so um, I think that it's very possible to do both of them and I've seen it done. And I've also worked hand in hand with IT departments um, creating the links and the words that you use to link certain types of permits to addresses in GIS, but it's with permitting software. It's a lot of work, but it's so worth it. Oh yeah, no, I just wanna make sure that it goes together. Well, I'll talk to Bob about how he yeah. wants to frame that because maybe we do it more gradually in a different with a different um, cost associated because the archiving, I think they were doing it piecemeal archiving. So that's usually how they do it because if you look at the at the capital projects for the next several years, you see similar amounts. So it looks like that's it's a gradual thing. But I'm sure there's probably equipment involved because I'm thinking that when you start doing that scan work, you need the equipment to scan, especially the big format yep. plan. So I'll see if Bob can do some research on that if okay. you want it okay. I just, You know, and it could be my position is outdated from, you know, what is available now, but I just know it was a nightmare before and you, ha it, you have to have the information if you're gonna do online permitting. Yeah, I know, I know. They, there is a certain amount of, work that still has to be done in paper, yeah. unfortunately. Um, I have a feeling that we will see something from Steve Pachurik around the police department. I'm not sure what it is. It's probably the HVAC, but don't quote me. Um, then we've got some public work stuff. I know we're gonna see some applications from DPW. What I would suggest we do is refresh the upgrades project to include the entire cost because that was a recommendation that came through from bond council because it didn't match. The cost that's reflected on here of $5 million does not match what the actual costs are estimated to be right now. So if there's any question later on from USDA or another agency, they're gonna to wanna to see that this was approved in its entirety. And I've taken it to CIPC a couple times Okay. And it needs to be addressed by the committee because if it creates a situation where there's confusion, it can delay the town's ability to obtain grants that would support the effort. So okay. that's going to need a refresh. Um, and so I haven't heard anything from SCEMS. I don't know that we will. Seniors. So like um, I said before, uh, we... Well, wait a second. Did we... Um, wasn't there... Uh, the, uh, both the... Um... The asphalt paving and the exhaust system, the things are going to have done by yeah. the uh, end of this fiscal year. Yeah. So. And so I don't know. Zach hasn't said anything. If he has something, he'll I, send I don't it think through. there's anything else no. at the moment. He said he didn't have anything, but I, I asked. We had a, a boo meeting last night, yeah. and 
um, we talked about it and asked if we could just review and make sure mm -hmm. because it has to be in shortly. So yeah, and that's the reason I put it on the agenda after talking to everybody, you know, individually because I asked David about it mm -hmm. because we do have that December first deadline. So I need to narrow down what things what needs to happen. Um, the, so the senior center. You outlined some of that earlier. Well, senior so. housing we would put down for 2024, not not fiscal 23. And <clears throat> we we have a number. Is Lila going to be developing that, and does she have a number? Um, we don't have a number yet because we don't number know how many units we're going to put in. But um, we have the 550 thousand that was appropriated from the CPA money. So hopefully we're going to use that to leverage through RDI or somebody like that, um, you know, multi-million. I, I can't imagine that we would be able to build anything for less than six to eight million, even if it's small. So I would put down six to eight, anticipated for 2024, okay? Um, and the well, reason you have to put it down, you. even though we're – you know, we're just we're willing to match, or our match would be 550. We have to put down the whole project amount. Okay, that's the other thing is we have to have some idea. So is yeah. is, and so this is what I don't understand: the connecting piece versus senior housing. Um, is Lily going to work on that application? Because she does have a copy of the CIPC application. Yeah, okay. yeah. We'll, we'll figure out something. We're, we'll have something in the, you know, between now and mid-January. Uh, there, there was interest in putting, we don't want the facade of the church to go away or the church steeple to go away. But we're, we're building in, we're looking in towards this area because you have the library expansion, however that happens, mm -hmm. and then you have senior housing. You're going to come around here, enter here, and have senior housing facing, you know, the police station, the community center, and the town hall. So you're going to have everybody looking into the like central area, and then having you're going to, but you're not removing the grammar school facade, the old senior center. Mm -hmm. facade of the new town hall it will just be improved and you're not going to lose the facade of the church but everything else in is going you're going to have so it's out facing and then in facing i know it's complicated but it's no, I, it's going to get form. it I just, we're going to yeah. form it it's going to come together it's it's uh, it's everybody working together the committee had really good I mean, we're, we made a lot of progress in an hour and a half last night. So the library, I'm going to need to, and I did remind people in the memo that any project that's on here that you want to move forward requires a refresh application. Yes, still have so, to put in for the new. And it still has to put something in for the library. Yeah, because okay. we, we, we know it's probably like up to $12 million now. It's, Yeah, we, we're pretty sure it's going to be at least somewhere in the neighborhood of $12 million. So. Um, the, the, so I would put in senior uh, community center slash senior center. It's not a feasibility study. Well, but so how this was framed last year, that 42.5 was for the senior needs assessment and feasibility. And that's moving forward. And that's moving forward. So I think if we want to add money to that, which we may need to do, I think we could, should consider refreshing it. No, it would be the center, it would be the senior center and senior, community slash Senior center line item, and again, just put in five million or six million. Okay, so for fiscal twenty-three, and then you're going to have a line item for twenty-three or twenty. Oh, senior. And then you're going to have a line item for fiscal twenty-three of um, the renovation of the. I would say that we. Why don't we just say the old grammar school? for the town hall, okay? That's a separate, I wouldn't put that in senior area, I would put that in the select boards area. Yes, yeah, that would be, in, and uh, I don't know, Dave, would you want to just put in three or four million? Three million. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put in three million. Mm -hmm. 
and, and this will we'll get this all. We'll have more information in the next three to four weeks. Okay. I know it's very hazy at the moment, but we've only had two meetings. Well, but the thing is, is whatever that information is for the refurbishment of the of the old grammar school to turn it into a municipal offices. I need that information if you want me to process that application. There's only so much time I have, and if I don't have a detail, I can't give people, I can't produce the application. You're doing a placeholder only, and, we'll, and we will tell the CPA, I mean CIPC, that it, further information is coming. So $3 million? $3 million. Okay. You're doing a placeholder only because we have to, John John has the um, gotten us a quote for 6500 Yep. We're going to go forward with that. They'll, they they know they have to come up with something really relatively fast because we have to have that to go to Boston. So um, and we need that to start hustling money. So where are the funds going to come from? It's, it's hopefully either the next round of ARPA funding or um, for what? For the senior for the conversion of the current senior center to so earmarked, but for purposes of the contract that is I put on as an item unanticipated, I literally saw it last night um, for the Deets conceptual design services. We might have to go to the finance committee for that. So you also have the uh, respectful workplace workshop training that's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of eight thousand dollars. I think I would like to. See to consider processing that now because yep. this is not anticipated. Um, certainly moving in the direction that we're moving, um, we didn't know what we would be looking at for a contract for conceptual design at the time we developed the budget. So if you want to do that, I think I'd, I just want a final number for the workplace training, yep. which is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 8,000-ish. I, I think we have, to go, we have to go to the uh, finance committee and tell them this is this is all unanticipated basically um, and we're moving forward and it's a generational opportunity for us to get funding and we have to leverage six to eight dollars for every dollar that we have and that it, and it's unusual that's an unusual amount I mean that's double the normal and if we're gonna ha be successful they need to give us a little bit of money mm. to get started yeah. Well, you can't get started without any conceptual thought. Yeah. So even to sit down at a meeting, we have to have to we have to have like. some rough estimates so we can, you know, the, go out and ask for the money. Uh -huh. So yeah. we have to have some plans. And I, I, everyone, I mean, Dave's plan of making multiple stories into a municipal building really makes sense, and everyone liked that. So we're going to pursue that. Well, I do think I would say one thing. Um, especially in the last six months, I've noticed that with the uptick in activity that the town wants to pursue, particularly grants and stuff, we're going to see an increase in people. So whatever that design looks like needs to include some space to grow and some additional meeting space. We that would and that may be it's a little bit bigger than maybe this quote envisions, but that's again that's something you can discern as you go through a process. And and this we talked about renovating this building for a senior center, a uh, community center, and it's a junk building to begin with. And we it's 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 hot in the summer, it's cold in the winter, it's it's crappy. It's an energy hog. It's it's and it's built incorrectly for what's coming. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. from climate change. So we decided at the meeting last night the most um, thoughtful planning would be that we rip this down and build a new senior center community center. And what we want be, is it made sense to connect it to the town hall and the police station. So you have the line going this way rather than this way. Mm -hmm. That's all. Oh, so move it into the middle? The In the middle. Two. Oh, okay. So it's the uh, you're connecting to the municipal offices, mm -hmm. you're connecting to the police station that way, versus connecting this way. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. And then you would use this end of the lot to access backwards into the middle of the lot for senior housing and the library. So you're you're moving. You have 
a central area, and everything is connecting from the town common Leary lot mm -hmm. to our municipal lot here with all our municipal buildings to the elementary school, over to Frontier, over to the park. And we will have a walking path that will connect. We'll have, you know, the ability, that's why we're calling it the Connecting Community Initiative. We're starting at Elm Street, comments. and we're going all the way over to our town park. And then we, when we get access to Brayburn properties, we'll have ball fields and recreational fields there, and that will be connected as well. So it's ambitious, but this is this is the opportunity for us to do it, and we need to have a plan that's cohesive. Oh yeah, I totally get it. And and both Dave and I love. I mean, the meeting I went to is you know was in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and they've done a huge, beautiful job of renovating their town. And David loves it too. And that's what sort of what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it really beautiful down here. We're looking for walkability, sociability, and economic right. activity. Right, I get all that. It's just the the You'll have, getting it, from A to, to D. I know, it's going to be a tough one. If yep. you, but it's if you're going to have true economic um, activity and vitality, you got to make it inviting. You got to have people come. You got to make people feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So we're going to pull this off. And so. Um, all right. So I'll draft what I can draft. Yeah. Um, there are some things I won't be able to draft because I just don't Casey, have all the Casey, it's details. fine. I'm going to explain it away to the committee. Well, but we have to have a piece of paper in front of Capitol. I know. Yeah. I know. We will. We will. We don't have to have concrete details on December 1st. We have to have a placeholder on December 1st. So we'll see what... Now that I, I'll have to have some conversations with a couple of yeah. departments. Well, well, Denise, Denise has taken really good notes. She's, um, it's conceptual at the minute, you know, vaguely conceptual right now. Mm -hmm. And all we're going to do is fill in the, um, fill in the details. Okay. Um, and that will be in the next few weeks, within six to eight weeks. Another thing that's a capital improvement sort of connection is the state reached out to the town about the Fisk property APR and asked that the town would consider adding additional funds to that. And usually this goes through cap, um, community preservation and capital because it's a land, there's a land interest. So we had processed their application last spring for $13,000. The land values change, so the state's asking us if, if we can addi add additional money to that. Um, the reason I put it on the agenda is because there's some nuances to this. So they would expect to close on the property to finalize the APR process on the state level the end of June. That makes it an FY22 project. So any additional funds would come out of whatever we have in open space re reserves. I talked to Brenda, we only have $25,000-ish, just a little over $25,000 in open space reserves. So that would take three quarters of that money. Um, I'm sorry, four fifths. <laughs> but we also have another property that's going through their evaluation process, and I don't know where that is. Based on what I see now, in terms of the APR process, it looks like it's taking at least a year. So. If there's no other asks in FY23, it may be worthwhile for the FISCs to propose, put an application into CPC for the additional funding. Mm -hmm. um, because you can't use revenue until you're in front of annual town meeting with prospective numbers for revenue. And that would be for the next fiscal year. Yeah. So My only concern is, um, if we have to delay town meeting this year again because of for health, you know, put, making it outdoors again, um, it will be very close to when they need to close. Oh, I get it. And so you, you need to reach back out to the um, APR person and let them know 
that um, we have to go through the town meeting process. Yeah, I, I sort of said that to her, but what, what really needs to be fleshed out is the other bylaw requirements, which are capital improvement and CPC. And frankly, the, this is a new ask, and the applications, especially for CPC, anybody can fill out the application for CPC. And if I think the FISC or somebody representing the FISC should fill that application out and contact the chair of CPC and get into the process that they have currently. Um, the capital piece is sort of a, adjacent to that. Um, but it really makes sense to figure out what, and because that's already a 22 issue, it doesn't necessarily fall within that December 1st question. My, my consideration of the bylaws after I've read them a million times is we're currently in that fiscal year. That was why it was, I was careful about trying to figure out whether it was 22 or 23. It, if it is 23, it would be an additional request similar to what we did with the church. Okay. So it does give them a little more time. But I do think that if the board wants me to reach back out to APR group, I can do that. I can forward the information to them and they could start that process. I can certainly warn Tim that they, he could see this, but I wanted the board to address the fact that, you know, this is an additional ask and we have limited funds in this fiscal year with which to meet it. Now that doesn't mean, if it means we can't come up with the whole 20,000, then, you know, are you willing to move forward if they send that application through with even a portion of it? So that's, that's those are some of the questions in front of you. I just, I think it makes, we can make that just, well. We don't have an application, but the ask is out yeah. there. So that's yeah. on the table. We can, do, I, we, we can do the ask with the APR and then um, if you could get a hold of this. Yeah. And just say these two applications have to be made out. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and find out from the APR program if they're going to wait for us. There's no sense in going through the whole process. Right. And so you, you made gonna, a very valid point. My, my understanding was it was going to close sometime in March. It was going to close. It has to be closed by June. It has to be closed by June 30th. Yeah. Right. But my my understanding, it was going through in February, <coughs> February or March. So just make sure that they are willing to wait. Right. And so that's part of the question. Here's the forms. I don't know what your timeline is, but you need to respond if you want. Yeah. You know, because normally we wouldn't hold the town meeting for one item. Generally, even if we were going to hold a special, we wouldn't hold it for one item. So, um, if well, they do want to, items they'd like on it. So. Well, that isn't That's a conversation right. we've had yet. So, you know, <laughs> but that it does impact the 22 information. That's the reason yeah. I wanted you guys to hear about it. Okay. Um, so I think I'm okay with capital right now. Well, it's 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 um, very vague. So literally we're putting in placeholders, but in the next few weeks we'll have more concrete concepts. Okay. And we can always amend those. Efforts. Right. But the main thing is to get something and we have to start getting in line. I mean, you have all the sewer information to, to reach out. Yeah, that's, to the, that's the shovel ready thing in front of yes. us. And we need to, and we need to be talking to the governor's office. And I mean, Trevor can work with you, but you, got to reach out to McGovern's office like this next week or two. Seriously. Because they're putting they're putting the rules together. And so what we need to do is let them know that we, we're ready to be in line. Okay? Mm -hmm. And and this no different this whatever whatever you're sending to McGovern, just you can recraft it, you know, tweak it to we need to send it to Joe and Natalie too because the state's getting infrastructure money. It's also getting additional ARPA money. And so we want to, it doesn't matter which pot it comes out of for, to us, but we need to make them aware that we have multiple, multiple millions of dollars worth of projects here and that they're really worth supporting because we're, we're saving an old building where, um, you know, we have a three town senior center need. Our seniors are in a temporary position, you know, temporary place right now. You know, we need to make a sob story, and then we got to have this, 
we, what we're doing. So that's a complete pivot from normal activity right now and budget season starting. I know, but not only do I have to deal with the classification compensation plan, which will come up in a little bit. But, but Casey, this is nobody, we have to advocate for ourselves, okay? I understand. What I'm saying is I have a list of things to do. You're asking me to switch gears and do completely different things. That list I'm of telling things you that shift. I know, but I'm telling you 30 to $40 million are on the line here. I am not arguing. I'm telling you something's going to fall off, and I want you to understand that that's what you're asking me to do. We have to do that. We have this committee together, working together to help support you in this as much as possible. I'm, we're pulling it together as fast as we can, and we'll give you as much information as we can, but we've got to do this. And you don't. it's much more effective to come through you we don't want to bypass you. Get that. I understand that. But there's a lot of pressure for things that are going right into budget season, and this is a big undertaking. I know. But I can't tell you that you've, we've got to, people have got to understand we've got 30 or $40 million we've got to bring in. You know, and, and you know, if nothing else, this discussion highlights the fact that our office is severely understaffed. Yes, we so, added, for what we have to accomplish. We haven't upgraded. Or, no, we haven't really increased our staffing and what the amount of things have been going on, and it hasn't changed for I don't know most of my time here. Yeah. That's, and the and the job requirements with COVID especially has been unbelievable. But Casey, I you know all of us are working. I I've had three. 12-hour days in a row here. I get that, but I have a compensation plan to do. I have, you just handed me six applications to put together for CITC. I have HR responsibilities. We have trainings coming up. All of these things sit on that desk. So a major messaging change and a major project that has a short-term turnaround time like that takes a great deal of airspace. I realize that, but you can be very vague on the CIPC. You do not have to have a lot of information. Well, functionally, it still has to get done. So it's, you look at, we can do it right here, right now. Project, senior is a renovation of um, the grammar school requested by the select board, fiscal year 23, expected lifespan of equipment, 50 plus years. Um, it re, it's renovation. Description, renovation of the, of the current senior center to make it into, turn it into municipal um, town offices. Caroline? Total cost, Caroline? maybe three million. Yes. Maybe we could have, you and I can have a conversation and we can talk like we did with one before and, and I could help you, Casey, with that and do that with Carolyn. We can go through it oh. line by line. It was <clears throat> you know, and, and then- the information, the, literally the information that we have was like two to three minutes per application. So do you think that you, we could set some time aside, Carolyn, and we could sure. do that together? Yep. Okay. Thanks. Not next week, though. Okay. We'll, we'll do it after Thanksgiving. Yep. Yep. Okay. I, we, can do it, we can do it Monday the 29th. Is that okay? Yep. Let's put it on the calendar. Okay. Out. I'll put it on right here. Put it on your calendar. Yeah. Because <laughs> otherwise it doesn't happen. It yeah. has to be on a calendar. It's fine. Jen, I'm putting in, I, the only meeting I have on the 29th is the 350th, okay? So so I will, any time that's convenient. I'm, I'm um, in, well, in regular shifts, so 8 to 4. All right. We'll do sometime in the morning, okay, to just get it done. Why don't we write 10 o'clock? Okay, sounds good. Write at 10 o'clock. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, speaking for yesterday, it really helps if you put the meeting on the right day. <laughs> okay. Not the pool meeting, but the other meeting. I had it oh, the first day for some reason. So, um, the next one is uh, December 8th. Yeah. 
We, you have a CIPC meeting that day too. Yes. Okay. The, um, the, C, um, the CIPC is at 5.30 and the CIC, or the CCI is at 6. Okay. Okay. Denise and I are in the, CI, the CIPC meeting at 5.30 and then we're going to the CCI meeting at 6.30. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I heard that and I went, they have another meeting. Right. Yep. Right, Denise? Um, we, you're fine with 6 or we go 530 CIPC? Yes. And then uh, uh, yep. That's CCI. Correct. And Denise and I, since there's only three of us at the uh, currently on the CCI, I mean on the CIPC, and Denise and I are both on the CCI. I will foresee that there is no issues with placeholders on the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Is that correct, Denise? We will make sure it works, Carolyn. And yeah. Casey. <laughs> um, there are the advantages of just showing up. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So I, I know you are thinking of having complete applications this is vague placeholders. And Denise and I will make sure that the placeholders are taken in and we will keep crafting them and improving them from. Work. Well, the reason I say that is because I've gotten slack in the last two years about what complete is. And so, and guess if what? I'm Casey? getting criticized for something that I'm doing on behalf of the board, I want to make sure that I get it done Casey, as well as I can. Casey, it's Denise, myself, and Mark Brennan. You will have no issues. <sighs> Well, I just just want to make sure that we okay. do no, the best we can. No one, no one is going to People be, are going to go back and look at it. Yes, but no one is going to complain to you, okay, or complain about you, all right? Okay. You don't have to worry. Done with that, mm -hmm. I'm all done with that. Okay, so we can go to uh, transfer requests. So there were two transfer requests that I was asked about. Um, one of them was related to the CCI, and that was a $3,000 transfer into the select board account for CCI activities. So I drafted the transfer application. I wanted the board to look at it because I wasn't sure I was framing it right, Carolyn, so I wanted you to take a look. Okay. Um, Denise, I'm just reading it to you. It says covering unanticipated expenses related to connecting community initiative. The CCI is intended to connect various economic development improvement efforts in the town. This expenditure is extraordinary and or unforeseen for the following reasons. After much discussion, the Flex Board endorsed the CCI to generate a master vision for development activities and economic improvements that include the town common, Larry Lot, Streetscapes, and other initiatives that, well, we should, you know what, we need you to need do to have a, the community element. That's the reason I wanted to Community look at center it. and um, sorry, senior just, housing, streetscapes. I would just ask. Uh, senior community, housing, community center, center. and, okay. Uh, okay. Streetscapes and other initiatives that will enhance Deerfield's presence in the Valley. Is that okay with you, Denise? Yeah, that sounds good. I mean, Carolyn, I think a lot of that is going to be getting materials ready to take to the MMA, MMA and then some other, um, as far as the website is concerned. So I think that should cover that for now. Okay, perfect. And the other one um, is for the Board of Health. Yes. Um, and that really, um, the reason why this is important is um, uh, we anticipate additional workload related to um, activities from Treehouse and Berkshire we Brewing. We have an additional and, workload too. And, and that's part of the And yeah. um, I, you know, just to be honest, Dick and I, you know, usually cover the weekends and we just, we just can't cover it anymore. Mm -hmm. Those 12 hour days take a toll. I know. By the end of the week, I'm dead. And I, I'm, I'm just, I have to say I'm just not willing to take on new additional workloads on the weekend. Mm -hmm. And so what everybody should should understand is for years and years and years, Carolyn and Dick did a lot of work in the background, just inspections and 
general. It's not huge. It wasn't a huge workload. It was a weekend here and there. We would split the weekend. But times have changed. Yeah. And it's definitely, it's become a lot more complicated. You know, just the amount of septic activity in town and in other towns is increased dramatically as people continue, as the housing market continues to be a place to, you know, exist in. So that's from that's that's created a situation where it's that activity is impacting our ability to meet the service needs. So the board took a step several weeks ago to change the board of health fees to take on some of that challenge. And this is the, the next piece of it, which is helping the finance committee understand that we didn't anticipate this type of activity or any upswing in economic activity that is now in front of us. I, I don't want to say we didn't anticipate it, but we didn't anticipate having to do um, food inspections every weekend. The, the volume, right. yeah. It, it's, it's now going to be an every weekend issue. and. You know, I, I just can't commit every weekend. And I know Dick is not willing yeah. to do that. Well, he's indicated that he is looking at retiring. He just hasn't given us a date. Yeah. And that's prompted other stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know. Um, so anyway, that's, that's really it. But we're also going to recoup this. Um, we got to make sure the finance. Right. Be, at, when we don't do food and we have always charged when we do food inspections. Even though Dick and I are just doing them, we still generated income to offset, you know, the Board of Health expenses. But one thing I will say is but you now haven't we raised have fees in years. I know, and we didn't raise our fees for years. So now, now we need to balance that cost for service. Right. So, you know, it, it's in your favor. You've addressed the fee thing at least yeah. to start. Right. We may find as we go into next year that that may have to be addressed again. We don't know what that's going to look like because it's kind of a new age. <laughs> yes, it is. Things have changed dramatically. So, Okay. So is there anything you want me to make changes on that for? Okay. No. So I'll sign off on those. I wanted you guys to look at it, and especially I wasn't sure my terminology for the CCI stuff was Oh, correct. no. The only so thing I would just changes. add is the community center or slash senior, community senior. Slash senior center, Leary Lot, the common... Yeah. I and all those things. And senior yeah. housing. Senior yeah. housing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll make that change and push that. I'll get that out, I'm hoping, tomorrow because Finance Committee has a meeting on the 30th, which takes me back to an item that we... Do you need a vote on this? No. Yeah. Um, so do you want me to be there for the Finance Committee meeting? So let me explain a little bit. So Personnel Board had a meeting on Monday, and... I had warned them that we need to get the classification compensation plan addressed after going to the last finance committee meeting. So I went through the class comp and I wanted to, it's kind of hard to read if you read this monster Excel spreadsheet. So I had talked to them about it and John Pereski brought up a very good point when I said, you know, I'm going to pass this information out. He said, well, why don't we have a conversation together? finance, personnel, the select board, since all those committees are involved. So I sent an email out to Julie and I sent it to David. And basically, if we met on the 30th, it would keep us close to the time frame of being able to have the class comp settled by the end of the third week of December, so like after the 16th. Mm -hmm. The 30th gives us a chance for all three committees to digest it and discuss it because personnel board does have to have a hearing to adopt it prior to us incorporating it into the budget sheets. So this is a little bit past the time frame that Brenda would like, but it's within December, which is what the finance committee was pushing for. So what I did with personnel is I said, look, this is the situation. They said, okay, let's try to meet on the 30th if finance and the select board will do it. And then the only day that they can meet in December is the 16th. So what I would be hopefully able to do after the 30th, if we can set this up, is schedule the hearing and get it posted so that everything's ready for them to vote on the 16th. So is the board willing to meet on the 30th with them? It would probably be after 6 o'clock. I've told Julie that most of the people on personnel board don't get home from work until around 6. Oh, no, that's fine. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I, a Tuesday. I have a... Um, it is a Tuesday, yeah. I have an annual meeting... Um, of the Mass Association of Conservation Districts, but it is Zoom and it's supposed to be done at five o'clock. Okay. So 
you were you were going to post this for five or six? what I would well Julie um, Julie and the finance committee have other items they want to discuss so I asked her if they could do if we could come on at six to talk to them oh okay then that's not an issue at okay. all cool I just I I mean switching zooms is not a big deal but mm -hmm. it, you know I get really nervous if it, if you know I'm supposed to be the meeting's supposed to one meeting's supposed to end and another one's supposed to start at the same time because <laughs> you mean like flubbing? never <laughs> never meetings the me meetings don't you know they don't always cycle up uh, the way they're supposed right. to I get it so um uh I can get I will if so I'll my meeting's if over I'll get on six. yeah but if we say six I'm sure it's going to be fine yeah it's not gonna they be have fine. some work they need to do I mean uh, I just I don't think personnel can make a five o'clock based on their conversation. So I think it would be better if they well, come. and and I can you know after a couple of, you know hour and a half or so. I mean it's not a huge deal if I left. Um, it, <laughs> probably no one wants to be president again. So I'm probably going to do another year at president. And I, and it, if I leave before they vote, it looks pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> They'll volunteer you. Oh yes. God, <laughs> you won't have a choice. I know. Oh God! One more thing. Okay. No, but six o'clock is fine. Okay. So I will put that on my list of things to do tomorrow. Um, and I did want to be able to give this to y'all, but unfortunately, making this thing a little bit more readable, so you can see the background, is important to me. So I, that's what I, I've been working on that in between other yeah. things. That's fine. Um. All right. Let me just add my Casey do this. I have a list. It's long. Okay. Mm -hmm. So those financial, I'll get those financial requests done. Okay. Um, to Carolyn's point, that next item, that ARPA thing, um, I didn't know that capital and ARPA were sort of going to connect, so I gave it its own item because I wanted to bring this up. That earmark question came up for me too. So now that I have a better idea of how you want to approach it, well, I would need some messaging. Yes, but one of you it, Denise. Yeah, and we'll work on it. Well, Denise will work on it too. But the most important thing is, is w once the rules are promulgated, we'll know whether we're asking for earmark or we're going to ask under ARPA funding. Okay. But it doesn't matter if we know for sure already our sewer, anything that we're doing with the sewer is infrastructure. Right. Okay, so we can move forward with that. We have enough information. And the other one that we want to put with that is, you know, reconstruction of um, Pine Nook. You know, we have, we know the pipes are falling apart. And, you know, that in itself is a probably a, at least $2 million project. So. Do you have a road going to go with the app? With the well, and the, what I wanted to know is, do you know if that $7.5 million that is in the, um, ARPA funding that you know that Joe has was, was are we included in that? I don't know. I would have to talk to Elena. Okay, you need to talk to Elena on that because otherwise we're going to move forward on that too. We've got to come up with what two or three million for River Road, and we've got to do that right now. And so we got to meet, make sure that we're getting some money from that that's supposed to be set aside because FEMA didn't come through for us. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. And, I, and I've been harping about that. That's so, a different grant program, though, right? No, that's the ARPA funding. It is far, okay, so it is part of that. It was the first. I haven't heard from It's the now. first ARPA funding from the state, you know, the first deposit. They've been getting another round. So what we have to do is we have to be in touch with Elena, and, jo you know, Elena will help us. But Joe, Joe and Natalie are going to have to help us get ARPA money for whatever isn't going to fall under the infrastructure right. money. Okay. But we don't really know yet how that's going to work out. But if they're aware of the project, they will help us figure out where to go. Do we need an earmark? Are we going to be under the ARPA funding? Whatever. Okay. Because that second round is coming in this next year. Yeah. And so... Before you know it's going to be here. That's right. That's why we have to do that. And so where do you want me to ask the, which one of these things do you want me to ask about? Wastewater? That's what I thought I heard you say was wastewater. Wastewater we know is going to be in the infrastructure program. Okay. So that goes to Jim McGovern. Right. And Richie Neal's office. 
And then we tell Joe and Natalie that we are, you know, we've talked to the McGovern's office, we've talked to Richie Neal's office, okay, for, you know, a suit of water. They are also setting aside ARPA money on the state level for these kind of infrastructure projects. So what we want to make sure is that Joe and Natalie are aware that we're hoping to get picked up under the federal program. But we need but we, we need them to help us. And it doesn't matter whether it's ARPA money or infrastructure money, but we have sewer issues that we need help on. And they're shovel ready. They're so shovel ready that we can, you know, take the money in and spend it tomorrow, okay? So we need to talk to them about that. It's not something that is down the road. It's already ready. It's already there. Right. And that's what I think they're looking for. Pro they're looking for immediate stuff. But we don't know. Then, then the renovation, Natalie has a bill moving forward to help small municipalities like us do our municipal buildings. Yep. Okay? Yep. So how does Natalie and Joe want us to talk about the renovation of the town of the old senior center for our town hall and how do we build where do they want us to put in for the three town that senior thing. community center do they want us to approach the new arpa funding or do they feel like this is going to qualify under the infrastructure bill and what you do is you put it in their lap to help us Find, find, find them, find them funding. funding, but they are aware a hundred percent of the project. Okay, that's the whole point. Mm -hmm. I will talk to. I'll call Natalie. And then, you know, we're going to work with RDI on senior housing, but we're looking for senior housing support as well. We already have five hundred and fifty thousand dollars that we set aside, but we need probably eight or nine million. Mm, yeah. Okay. Easily. Right. What's RDI? Rural Development Incorporated. It's I a it's a nonprofit of the F Franklin Housing Authority. That's what I thought. We've worked with them in the past. It hasn't panned out, but they have a brand new person that is wonderful that Sunderland worked with, and so we're hoping that we can just copy them. I asked Jeff about that today. Yeah, we just need the RFP, and we're going to go work with them. Okay, because that's what I asked him about. I knew that was somewhere on your radar yeah. screen, radar screen with senior housing. I just didn't know. How they had, how had a, Sunderland they've had did a that. change out of staff, and Lily and I were like, "Oh my God, let's try it." Okay. So we're, that's what we're going to do. Hmm. So did RDI do the RFP, or did it come out of? It Sunderland? came out of Sunderland, okay. and they our, Sherry must have done it. Okay. And the, the RDI responded to it, and we have more money to match than what Sunderland had come up with, so we should be okay. okay. I'll ask but again, I asked want, him about it. But we, we want to tell we want to tell Natalie that we are addressing our housing needs in town by putting in subsidized. This is not affordable. The Sugar Snowberry Court is the affordable senior housing. You know, market value senior housing. We're not doing market value senior housing. We're doing subsidized senior housing. It's a friendly 40B. Okay. Okay. It's subsidized senior housing. So people don't are, you know, anybody that's on fixed social security, they only pay a third of their social security into it, no matter what it is. You know, it's a flexible rent. So it's a friend it's basically a friendly forty B. And on the Oxford property, we're tabling that, right? Because you yes, have not we're waiting back for new lawyers. lawyers. Back to us. Okay. So I had a placeholder for the purchase and sale agreement and for any select board policies that might come up. Mm -hmm. And I've been holding that placeholder because... You do know that all we were willing, if they need us to sign off on it, we were willing to do a 48-hour posting. To just right. Um, okay. But if they had gotten back to me, I would have put it in front of you. Okay. Just, so. just make sure that they're aware that we... Okay. Because we fill, filled out the survey, right? Yeah. Okay. I sent it back to him, and I have a document that I need to send him. I have to find it in my email. Okay, perfect. And 
next thing is a recommendation for Board of Health agent. So I sent you a memo. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, our main health agent, um, Dick Kalaszewski, has notified us that he wants to retire. So we went through a process of evaluating the job description. I took it to you. I took it to the personnel board. Um, I worked with everyone on a salary estimation, put a vacancy out. We received a, it, a very tight employment market. We received one application, and we interviewed the person, and the recommendation to the board is if the board wants to consider a finalist interview, um, you tell me what you want to do. Um, the person comes very high, highly qualified. He already works for us. He, he does. <laughs> He does. Um, he, Alex does work for us. Part -time. Um, he works in a part-time capacity. He is currently in school for his master's degree and brings a lot of experience in larger and smaller towns to the table, which is interesting because the nuances of how an old, a larger town versus a small town work are very different, especially in the situations that come up with in food service and stuff. So. I mean, Alex, but there's a lot of intersect between the inspections people, our department, um, that that create communication nuances too. I, well, I've been working with him the entire time he's been here. He's been wonderful. Um, he was over at the clinic today, um, you know, helping us register people, and he was wonderful. And he stopped by and, and said the clinic was very successful. Yeah. yeah, and it was it was interesting to hear his take on it. Because mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't always he doesn't always work in that particular space, and that's something that that Carolyn does all the time. So it's it's a different perspective. I found it very interesting to talk to him. So I'm just handing it to the board. If you want to set up finalist interview, I got the impression that Trevor might want to do that, but Trevor's not here. So you tell me what you want to do. Um, well, I would I don't want to lose him, so I would recommend that we um, hire him. I mean, I make the motion to hire him because we, we, he's, I have to tell you, he's being courted by several different communities and we need to lock this down. Yes. So, um, it was the motion to have me approach him with an offer letter. Yep. Yes. And I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, David. Very enthusiastically, by mm -hmm. the way. We're, I'm thrilled to death. He has a really good work ethic. He's he's just really great. And I um, this has been very stressful thinking about replacing Dick. And he is really a good choice. I think it's very stressful thinking about Dick and yes. Dick leaving. Let me just tell you that. I, I'm going to have issues. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, as a town, we've been extremely spoiled because Dick is really available 24-7. He has been, and, and so that's I mean, going to be a transition when, for us. Even just having a flyer or something, he'll come and, you know, do it, whether the house is, um, you know, have, have or not. And, you know, yeah. some of, and some of the housing complaints we have, you know, are on weekends or holiday weekends, and, you know, it's no big deal. Dick will just go. And, um, you know, if, and if I'm in a new witness, you know, we go together, and it's not a big deal. But... Um, the times there are changing. Yeah, and so it is very stressful because the level of service that you know we've we've been able to provide is is really is hard pressed to keep it up. But this also goes to the argument as we develop the budget of changing the approach with the agent. So but that I, we. But I feel like team. Alex, he understands that, and he has he has no problems working the weekends, which you know. Maybe in 20 years he's not going to feel too excited about, but right now as a younger person, it doesn't bother him to work on the weekends, and he actually, is, you know, it fits in with his schedule because he is still in school. So um, you know, I'm just thrilled to death that we, you know, have somebody that wants to work weekends is, and a holiday. That's huge. It's huge, huge, huge. So and okay. especially in this labor market. 
It is. It is a tough labor market, I have. And, and saying that you're going to be available 24-7 is... Yeah. It's that kind of position, but on the other hand, he does have a lot of enthusiasm. He comes to it with a lot of right. a lot of education and a lot of knowledge. Yeah. I yeah. I find helpful, and I'm I'm pretty sure that's how. Yep. Okay. It would work. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Sure. Um. You want to go through the mail? So. That's up to you if you want to. Yeah. There's a few things that I wanted to put on your radar screen. Uh, one of them is a an email from Greg Franceschi. He wants to meet with you on December 1st. And it's really an outlet. What he sent was an outline of some of the items that uh, he thinks need to be addressed with the Senior Center and the Congregational Center. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get that in front of you so you have a chance to digest it. I have him scheduled for December 1st. Okay. okay. Could you forward that, this information to Kevin? I did. You did, okay. And I warned Kevin that I'm probably going to ask him to come. Come to that meeting, yeah. Um, we're hoping, yeah. I mean, I I, I haven't um, seen all this stuff, but I, we need to secure the senior center. We Now that we're making yeah. a decision and we're going to renovate it, yeah. it's not going to be torn down. We need to preserve it. So we got to tighten it up. For we the need interest. to tighten the envelope up. Yeah. And so that was a conversation that Kevin and, and I had. Um, and I think, you know, the... the Dave is handling the church. The church is going to be renovated. It's going to be used um, So for the seniors. So things are going to be happening. I Obviously, the replacing the, that panel that's out is critical to keep the rain out of the building and having it deteriorate. But, and um, I know Jay Stryker. Is that being made now or no? Yeah. I mean, Jay, poor Jay was in the hospital, so oh. that, it got set back a few days because he was going to use his machine to mill the whatever it was to put the, of the panel. But I think that's been worked out with Peter um, Thomas. Okay. Uh, I know Peter Thomas had picked up all the was, was going to do the hardware part of it, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then it just sits just snaps in. I know Kevin's working on it. Yeah. I know they've been working with Kevin, so I'm not sure who is doing what now, but, um, I, you know, hopefully Jay's home and he's feeling better and he can do some of the, he's very talented with the mechanical, you know, and wouldn't, you know, getting everything correct. But so is Peter. So I'm hoping between the two of them and Kevin, they'll be sorted out. I just haven't heard. I've been so busy. I haven't connected. I know Kevin's been working with them. Okay. He took a phone call when we were meeting right. the other day. Mm -hmm. So another thing that we received was a denial of a claim request from Maya for some of the damage over at the Senior Center. So this plays right back into that Capital Improvement Planning Committee, mm -hmm. uh, our planning project question. That's why I said, you know, Kevin and I have talked about it. One of us or both of us are going to work to def to facilitate a request that incorporates some of the stuff that my suggestion was to incorporate some of the information in the GRLA study, but understanding now that we have the environmental study, that, that plays a part too. So um, determining an amount of money to request to seal the building so that we can move forward with whatever the town decides it wants to do is important if you're going to preserve the space. Yeah. So, well, we are, I mean, David. Um, moving forward with that um, work, and uh, we again we have to make sure that we're not going to have continual damage there. Yeah. And so we did receive some information from the Franklin County Municipal Aggregation Group. That's um, oh information on the the winter numbers, proposed winter basic rates. And some of this needs to go up on the website. I wanted the board to look at it in its in its mail form. In other words, through your mail item. Because there's information that folks that are taking advantage of the municipal aggregation can use and folks that may want to take advantage of the municipal aggregation. So in this, it gives contact information, guidance, for Deerfield, Conway, Colerain, all of us. Mm -hmm. They have separate, Colonial Power Group has separate 
areas for each of the towns to utilize to facilitate. I thought we were automatic unless you opted out. And so that's the thing. These basic rates, people might people might want to make changes or they may want to opt in because the basic rates that Eversource is proposing are higher than anticipated. So folks that may have opted out may want to reconsider that. Oh, okay. So, so you're automatically opted in. And then they had a choice. They could make some choices about whether they wanted to be removed or not, whether the opt out. So if you never got, re if you never made any effort to remove yourself, you're still in. You, I think that's how it works. But yes. Can you just verify that? <laughs> <laughs> because it's very confusing. It is very confusing. Yeah. And I, that's and, why this and is I get black calls on it, hard and for I, me to follow. And I get phone calls on it, and I tell people, you better call MA because I don't, I don't, yes. I can't even follow it myself. Yes. And so there is a number, if you look on the website, the municipal aggregation has a page with information. And I was going to add the information for Deerfield residents up on the page. Um, but even though MA is out of, the, out of the area, she has been checking that message board, or that message, voicemail okay. message system, so that she can keep apprised of this, but also streetlights. So streetlights is in a process. We put a quote out for the installation piece. Mm -hmm. And I should know more by Friday. Well, I'm I'm going to keep this. Yeah, I can explain absolutely. it to people. But please, can you just verify to me the opt-in that people, if they never did anything, they're still in. And if you opted out, you have the ability to opt back in. Okay, for the winter or for however long you want to be in. I mean, it's like six months at a time, right? I think it's six months. Ago. All right. So, just clarify that people, if they have done nothing, they are already part of the program. If they opted out, they could opt back in at least for the winter, and we know that they're going to save money in our town program for sure. That's all I need to know because mm -hmm. I can repeat that. Yeah, <laughs> I can ask any Sally. I'm just. This confuses me so much. It is very confusing, I have to say. This is really... I know it sounds so dense, but I, I just... No, it's one of the more confusing. Oh. Municipal aggregation is very confusing. And then if you keep keep going into your mail, you'll see that there were several DPU filings for three-year energy efficiency plans. Berkshire Gas did one. Mm -hmm. uh, Eversource did one. So... I wanted you to see those in case they were informationally important. Um, National Grid published their YOP public notice, so if people have comments, they can follow the directions in the notice. Um, just because you know, there, I know there's a lot of interest in that too. We did get a mailing from FERC, so that's in the mail. Okay. And. Um, I don't always know what to do with some of this FERC stuff, but um, if they're asking for a comment uh, for licensing, is this for the drilling program um, or a, the transmission tower replacement project that National Grid's doing? Um, we really, there's not really much for us to comment on. Right. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure, but it didn't seem like it had to do with some of the other FERC filings that I know have come through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the FERC, the ones we want to intervene on are the ones related to the river. Right. Because we want to make sure that we can mitigate as much as possible the, the releases because it's erosion, constant erosion in the riverbank. Every time there's a release, it's like having a 25 year storm. So if you think about that, if you're doing multiple releases in a day, you're having the impact of two 25-year storms in a day. So the, the whole purpose of is, is you look at your riverbank, and if there's issues, you need to have them repair those issues or do some kind of remediation, bioremediation on those riverbanks if they're going to renew their license. Okay. And we have the Connecticut River, we have the Green River, and we have the Deerfield River. So anything related to the three rivers, we need to we need at least just forward them to me. Okay, I usually know about them because I comment them through the conservation district. 
but it's also we need to comment it as the town of Deerfield mm -hmm. if they impact us. That's good to know because right. FERC sends this stuff out, and we don't. If we don't, if we're not sitting on top of it like you do in your conservation district, we don't always know what it is. I know it's it's just um, it's tough. Well, the relicensing is is not very often. It's multiple years, usually five years. So it's not a huge issue all the time, but different dams get renewed at different times. And so you just, the, depending on what dam it is, we need to make sure that we're getting some kind of review. Okay. Because it's not always a bad thing either. I mean, sometimes it's okay. Um, I, I don't know. I don't really want to go through this. I mean, this year, but whatever. We should. The Y O P. Um. Why don't we set this aside for a little bit? But M D A R notice. It's part of the national grid one. Yeah. I hate to open a can of worms, but we should probably have some kind of review of that. Okay, so this is related to the Sherman Dam. It sounds like they're only doing test boring, so it's okay, probably. I don't think we have to do anything on this. Uh, there's going to be enough oversight. And we have four and a half hours to evacuate the town. <laughs> don't say that. I know. Did I just do something? Panic. I don't know. It's still green, so I think we're we still can on. still hear ourselves. So okay. I'm looking at the screen. Okay. So um, I, you know yeah. this liquor license thing. No. Wow. Um, oh, so that there were two items that were unanticipated. One of them was the alcohol home rule sufficient question. Mm -hmm. And I initially asked Trevor because he seemed. He seemed to be the one person who had more background as it related to marijuana. Um, some of those questions are a little difficult for me to answer because I wasn't here. Oh, I thought we were talking about the um, liquor licenses. That's, so that's the, yeah. there's two things. The first one was the home rule petition that relates to the liquor licenses. Right. So we requested six total liquor licenses. And a couple of the things that came up in the questions, if you read the highlighted questions, mm -hmm. they're asking for some information I don't have. I can, I can say that we don't have a formula, formalized economic development plan. Um, but I do know that this was related to potential economic development, both in the economic footprint around the restaurants, but also it, how it ties to marijuana because of the bylaws and the regulations. Mm -hmm. So that was my understanding. Yep. Is there anything you want to add to that so that? I don't have anything off the top of my head. Do you eat, Dave? No. That's, okay. You know, previously, I thought we were applying for the six additional so we could get one more. So we could have the opportunity one more. for another retail, for more retail licensing. On, on the cannabis side. Right. Yeah. Um, and so they asked if there were specific entities for these licenses. I'm not aware of a specific it entity. Currently is not. Um, we don't have an economic development zone, but we do have economic development efforts that are underway that yes. this would impact. We want, um, I mean, we're hoping to have positive, all this activity that we're doing through the CCI will generate actually new establishments. And so that sort of connecting 
various sort resources in town could mm -hmm. be very useful. But the one thing that they say is they traditionally place a time frame to issue the licenses on town. Yeah, but isn't it like you get like two years or something? It's or one years? to three years, but they have supported extended time frames. I don't know that we can that that can be accomplished in a one to three year period because, frankly, whatever well, we I've, glean in economic development is going to come out of what we build. But it's I, I, it's if, not something to really enforce, though. Yes, and you know what? I would say we can try it for one for definitely the three years, and then guess what? At I would year, say three to five because yeah. They, yeah, but building these things, things yeah. are going to take time. Yeah, and yeah. it's just, you know, because, you know, currently we have a couple of liquor licenses that have not been used for a while. But they're not related to the retail marijuana licenses. That's no. the thing. No, It's the, on, it's the yeah. off-premise sales yeah. that's, that's the key piece of it. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, and as Dave said, there's no issues with extensions, really. They've so been, they've been pretty lax on that, so I would if say they're gonna, if, if they're going to give us one to three years without a question, just take the one to three years. Yeah. And All right. Then More we'll, than three to five. or. And then if we can't have the opportunity to make a five, fine. But don't even worry about it because when it comes to three, we'll just say, oh, we need another couple of years. Well, this is what activity we have so far. We still have one left or something. Whatever. Okay. Don't That's worry about it. This is according yeah. to the. I went back and I researched the bylaw or the town meeting vote, and the reason I brought it to you was because it does. Say, the town meeting vote does put the select board as the as the person reviewing any changes that come through. That's why I wanted you to talk yeah. about it. And I didn't have the background. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean I would say that you know we will be that further along with our all our activity, and so. If we have something on the horizon, it will be easy to get an extension because we know it's coming. Okay. But if you don't have it available and you have to go through this all the hoops, I mean, you almost use up six months to a year just to give them to have them issue them. That's okay. why I was thinking that it, maybe we ask them to consider three to five. But on the other hand, no, they don't like to do five we, years. We. We have a time frame on this that we have to get it done. So I'm more inclined now that we've you've given me some background to say three to one to three works fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then and then by then it won't be an issue to ask for an extension if we need one. Okay. So the next thing that was unanticipated was the deeds proposal, and I didn't see that until yesterday evening before mm -hmm. I left. Um, the reason that was I'm brand new. We is, talked about it last night. You did talk about it last yep. night. I know John presented some of the information. Um, the only place we could pay for this, really, is contracted services. So we're also we're going to have a draw from contracted services for an unanticipated item for the training. And this starts to get us to a point where we're more shovel ready, as Carolyn said, for other federal and state funds that might be available. You have because it gives us some sort of conceptual plan, and it needs to be done relatively quickly. So my thought was if the board um, is okay with this, we should probably process a transfer request with the Finance Committee. Yes. But we should get this started, especially since now I understand that you want to have materials ready for January's MMA meeting. Yes. Yep. Okay. So I can get that started. I just want to, I'm figuring we would at least request 15 grand because, you know, our training cost is about 8,000 and we don't have the ability to absorb that in the budget. The, um, I assume we'll have to sign a contract for this, right? Yeah, 6,500. I can do that. I know, but um, with their, their fee schedule and everything else of additional services, I would want to I'm make sure there's a cap okay. on that contract. The managing principal at $230 an hour is a little on the excessive side, I think.
I'm not a huge fan of signing architectural contracts. I yeah. like to make them sign our contracts. You know, because I want to own that information, and they typically yeah. don't want to. And, you know, being a clerical help with this company, you get seventy dollars an hour, which is pretty good. Ain't good. <laughs> okay. Let me talk to John. Okay. Talk to them. Well, we just I haven't talked to the principal, yeah. so. I think what we want to what we want to change based on. Um, the way I look at this right now, John John got this quote for for that, you know, the current senior center mm -hmm. to be rehab, which is great. But we'd we'd want them to not design this the com this community senior center. No. But we would want them to design a plan that would That's have the true. attached community center senior center to it. So we just need to make that clear when we talk them uh, you know before when you sign the contract that we're including I mean he they're basically just doing the they're senior, just doing their field yeah. of municipal but, office. Yeah, but it is our intention to have the community senior center attached to the town hall and the and the police so you want to add that that's going to change the price of the mm -hmm. no we're not asking them to do a thing we're just wanting them to be aware that that when they are looking at the renovations, the renovations are going to will now include the connection to the senior center, community center, and then to the police station. Okay? That's all. We just want to say it's not going to be a freestanding building any longer. It's going to be part of a complex. It should not change their quote. Because they were only looking at square footage anyway. Yeah. You know the. I will say one so. thing. I did have a conversation with Trevor, and he and I both agree that we need to have some growth space there because the town isn't getting smaller in terms of oh, the definitely. administrative function. Yeah. Oh no, everyone agrees. They're becoming more complex, so we need to have enough space for storage, meeting and space, and, and we're not and using. We're office. not putting. We're not putting. The, make sure they understand the elevator is not internal to the building. It will be an external addition. The who? The elevator. elevator. Oh, well, yeah. We're not going to suck up no. square footage for an elevator shaft. Okay. No. It's it's going to be addition. It's going to be exterior to the main building. But I I do think that we made. Oh, no, I agree. Them I agree. But that's what think about that. It, it brought up the whole. You know, yeah. the elevator is is got to be external. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's what Sunderland did, didn't they? What's that? Didn't Sunderland do an external elevator? I'm not well, sure. I don't know. I, I can't I, remember, actually. I always walk up the stairs. I know. And it kills me. It's on the other side of the river. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just had one. Um, this came up, actually, out of the SCEMS meeting yesterday. Um, I, can you just check with Kevin if we're a member of DigSafe? We're not. Towns aren't required to be a member of DigSafe. If you want the sewer lines and water lines to be part of Dig Safe, you have to be a member of Dig Safe. So you want him to investigate that? Yes. Maybe towns don't have to be members, but if you want our piping to be part of it, you have to. And the reason I bring this up is not just because Tom Fight and Kevich brought it up last night, but um, um, Verizon put a poll right through. Um, Franklin County Fairgrounds sewer line, and they couldn't figure out how come um, the toilets weren't working. And the reason the toilets weren't working is because the pole went right through the line, mm -hmm. and it was a hundred percent blockage. Couldn't have been more perfect. And it's because the sewer lines were not part of the dig safe, and the dig safe wasn't. Um, you know, mapped out, the sewer lines weren't mapped out from the town of Greenfield. Well, I will say ours are, and they, I don't think the water district is part of Dig Safe either, but usually they get calls to go out and mark the spaces that they know about. So I'll ask him to investigate it. I don't know what yeah. that means. Okay, yeah. I, it's just wheelhouse. I did not realize that you had to be a member to have your lines, whatever Identity. utility your utility lines identified. So I just, based on my conversation with Mike Nelson um, the other day, and then Tom Fyden and Kevin last night, I'm like, wow, I really need to check this out. Yeah. So 
just make sure we get it. And yet Eversource doesn't do such a hot job of identifying their utilities, okay. as is evidenced by several projects. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah, I'll ask him. I, I, it was a, every day there's new knowledge to be gained. <laughs> yep. It's certainly discouraging at some point. And, and that is a disturbing one. I didn't realize that that was oh, a problem. I didn't I'd know. I, just, thing, I thought it was automatic that they would include our... I mean, I didn't. I knew we didn't have to, but I just thought they would include it automatically. It's not automatically included. So that's crazy. Yeah, you have to pay for it. Yeah. So. Was it one hundred seventy-five dollars a quarter or something? something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Can we not have it in the budget this year? Um, Maybe well, we could consider yes, putting it in. I, you know, what we want to do is see if we can apply with South Deerfield and Old Deerfield Water District, or you know, the Old Deerfield Fire District. And the South Deerfield Water District and the town, and we have all we do the water pipes and the sewer as a joint application, and so it's split by three. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if Old Deerfield, because they're doing such a they're doing so many old they're replacing piping up there. They might already be a member, but there still should be a, a way that we could apply. Even though the districts are separate from us, mm. I, it should still be a joint application because yep. it's municipal. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's, I would think that they would at least let us squeeze by with that. Yep. And, that would, and that would help with the cost. Yep. Yes, it would, yep. definitely. Okay. Um, Anything else? I have. Is there any other? Um, oh, I think everyone's left. Public comment? Any There's public comment? Chris is Laramie, oh. Jonathan, that's it. Okay. Oh, Chris. Hi, Chris. How are you, Carolyn? Hi. All right. Do you have any questions? <laughs> uh, yeah, just uh, is that panel going on to church tomorrow? Um, I no. don't think so. I don't know. I don't I know. Heard, I know. I heard Kevin um, talking to somebody about it today. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Somebody told me about it, and I wasn't sure if it was. They said it was going up tomorrow, and I, you know, I just want to be sure before me and Paul head down there tomorrow, and there's nothing there. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. You know what? Um, uh, can you text Kevin? And just go get my phone. But yeah. Oh, you know what? I'll text him. Oh. Thanks, Dad. Just sure. adding extra work. No, sorry. If you, if normally I have my phone. <laughs> um, Jen, if you could just text Kevin to ask if the they're going to do the repair and then to let Chris know. But yep. So that he's going to go down and cover it. Well, it's very nice, of you, Chris. That was all I had. Thank you, guys. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hold on a sec. Let's see what he says. <laughs> Stop calling me. <laughs> Stop you me. might not want to repeat it. <laughs> yeah. Stop texting me. I that will, might be I what will. he does. Usually he doesn't um, do that kind of stuff with me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Chris, is there something else you want me to answer? Um, do you remember that I don't? Oh, the Mill Village project, but I don't know if we wanted to talk about that or not. You had something in the packet. Oh, Kevin and I have e your email. Yeah, it's just uh, Larrabee at recorder dot com. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate it. Sure. Excuse me. All right, I texted him yours. He'll let you know. Okay. I don't have anything else, Carolyn. Nope. We made it. <laughs> you want to make a motion? Or? Oh, yeah. I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I'll second it. <laughs> All those in favor. <laughs> Hi, Carolyn. Hi, David. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was already like trying to organize my paperwork. Yeah. <laughs>